Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is brought to you by the Friends in Recovery Community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction. Join our hosts as they speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Friends in Recovery podcast with Jersey Ed. I'm your host, Jersey Ed, along with my co-host, not Buckeye Bambi, but it is Super Beth. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> How you doing, Beth? Bambi <laughs> is in a need, is, is with her family now in a need of some prayers. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but... Um, Guys, please, if you're listening to this, just um, send out some good vibes and prayers, whatever you call it, to um, Bambi and her family for, for the next couple of weeks. We really would appreciate it. She'll be back on the show next week. Of course, she's not going to miss Jeff Zazel. Of course, nobody wants to miss no. Jeff. <laughs> so anyways, but uh, how you how you doing, Beth? I am. Uh, I'm tired. I know. I What's going yesterday. on over there? I know. Like, yeah, I moved yesterday, like yesterday, like I woke <laughs> up for the first time in my new home. <laughs> How was that? Feeling? Like, I can't believe. Oh, it was weird. It was right. It's like, it's like really, really exciting. Like we've been saving money for nine years to buy this house. Oh uh, yeah. And, uh, but you know, so there's this very like, uh, like I feel really proud of us and I'm really mm -hmm. excited. I'm grateful. Right. We definitely, uh, asked for help and we received it and we're yeah. lucky. Yeah. And then I woke up this morning and I'm like, why is everything I own in a box? <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. You just might get it right. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm on Facebook like twice today and both times one of these little pictures pops up and it says, always feel grateful or remember the five years ago, this is what you wanted or something like that. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still tired. I don't want to <laughs> There's no gratefulness right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, we're going to so talk are you about doing down there? I'm doing good down here. We're um, we're about four months ahead of you in in the moving situation. So we're literally and I hate to tell you this, just getting settled in, just kind of finding the routine and, oh. you know, I know, I know, I know boxes Four after months. boxes. Well, I, you know, maybe it was a little bit less than that, but you know, me, I like to hang on to the old shit. My sponsor calls me, you're a hanger on already. You're a hanger on all right? That's what he calls me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, I'm like reminiscing about some of the old stuff from the other houses and I'm, you know, thinking, should we have left that house? Should, you know, it was always the would have, could have, should have. And, you know, that's what step 11 does for me today, though. You know, I, I can I can kind of, you know, and that's what we're going to talk about. We'll get into that in a minute. But but step 11 comes in pretty handy in these situations. I'll be honest with you. So absolutely. Um, you Got to keep that side of the street clean as you we do. Move through. You do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But before we get into step 11 and all the other good stuff, I just want to let everybody know um, <clears throat> the podcast hotline is 800-989-6504. You can uh, give us a call and let us know, uh, I don't know, sober shout outs, whatever you want to do there. Say hello to Jersey Ed and Super Beth and maybe say a prayer for Bambi or whatever you want to do. Um, that's that's fine there. Or you can email us at help at friends and recovery podcast dot com and look for our, or we're looking for a podcast intern also. And I know Bambi has been flooded with emails so many <laughs> it's just all been insane. of them it's been insane right it's been insane so <laughs> please email us at help at friends and recovery podcast.com if you're interested in a non-paying job <laughs> that's why we get so many fucking emails right because it's a non-paying yeah. job <laughs> that's what I makes it <clears throat> i know i know so that's it it's service work guys come on somebody do service work step up let's go um I'd also like to thank our donors who made this show possible uh, to make a donation. You can Venmo us at, uh, at friends and recovery enterprises under business. We're also on cash app at uh, dollar sign friends in recovery community. I believe it is. And um, you can send a check to friends in recovery enterprises PO box 1551 Johns Island, South Carolina, two, nine, four, five, seven back to you. Super bad. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like, like, you know, one of those Don't old, <laughs> like the price is right. Remember how they used to give out yeah. the, the name, you know, <laughs> Beverly Hills, 606609. <laughs> <laughs> right, you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, and Fire Network is now part of, it says part O-F-F, not even of, it says part of the Friends at the Fire <laughs> Network. That's what it says on my copy here. It's right here. That's hey, what it hey, says. hey, Ed. Yes, Ed, dear. Yes. What? What's the Fire Network? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> You're getting it. You are now officially in with us. <laughs> so I'm glad you asked there, Super Beth. Uh, the Fire Network is a network of podcasters and uh, anybody who's on social media um, that wants to get into our little fire network. You're going to, you can live on our website. Carl is work. Carl from sober pot is working on our website. He's, he's getting all that together. So if you have any questions about the fire network, email Carl at so um, info at soberpod.com and he'll send out all that information. Or you can email me at help at friends recovery podcast.com. And I will forward that email to Info at soberpod.com and Carl will answer your email. So <laughs> don't make me work twice, guys. Just send it to info at, at soberpod.com, right, guys? <laughs> um, so, and we're working on that diligently. And um, I just want to give a, well, I know I'll give a shout out in a couple minutes to, to Carl. But, um, anyways, this week's topic obviously is step 11. We're going to talk about um, and uh, we'll continue, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. So stay tuned for some great sobriety and some great uh, some great stuff that we're going to be spewing out here in a minute. Uh, Beth is going to, be, of course, be using, Super Beth will be using her, her big book, and I'll be reading from the 12 and 12. And um, that is it as far as that goes, as far as literature goes. Any any other literature? No, man. No, big book. Only the book. Only the big book. I know. I know. I'm like the step guy. I love my step book. So um, shout outs, Beth. You have a shout out. I actually just thought of another shout out. I want to give a shout out to Bambi oh. and how strong she is and yes. how what a good family member she is. Yes. And, um, you know, she's she's showing up for life, like no matter yeah. what. So I want to give Bambi a shout out. Bambi. Yes. Bambi. Yeah, she is. And let me tell you, she's when. This show, she's never late for this show. She's always on. She's always ready. Um, yep. I could, I'll be honest with you too, guys. She is always on the meetings too. Like almost every meeting she's on, we have two to three meetings a day and she's on those meetings. And that's how dedicated she is to sobriety and friends and recovery communities. So um, if you want to know more information on our uh, our twice as daily Zoom meetings, a Zoom meetings, you can find them at our website, friendsandrecoverycommunity.org or at aa-intergroup.org. And we are on those two. You can find us all there or look for us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, Snapchat, um, Friends and Recovery Community Adventures. We also do an adventures thing. Um, also, when you're looking at this show, please like, subscribe, share, and give us a five-star review because it'll go out more and more and more. And uh, we'll get the word out um, to seven people instead of four. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so here here it is we're up to the uh oh well no i got a shout out i want to i want to give a shout out before we get into that um carl from sober pod carl i i gotta tell you guys this show wouldn't be what it is if if carl from sober pod wasn't around i know i i bust his chops a lot and all that but carl has been helping us out a lot he's been going above and beyond donating time to this show donating you know his his knowledge of of all this stuff so carl thank you so much you're you know you may not be seen on the show but you're a big part of this show and uh you know we're, we're blessed to have you or have you in our lives and uh one day maybe me and carl could come on and we can do an interview with each other where you can you and bammy can interview us and we can sure. tell the whole story how we got together how it all came together him oh i would love this yeah it's it's a pretty cool story so um, and that's I feel another like we're booking January really fast. Yes. Yeah. Corey first week, Carl second week. <laughs> and if you want to book something, if you want to get out here and, and be interviewed or talk about your story, just send us an email at help at friends and recovery podcast.com. And we'll be sure to get you guys going on here. So now um, we're up to the question of the week. Question, question of the week. 
Thank you, Carl. What is your favorite board game, Beth? That is the question of the week. Here, at the, you know, the question of the week. I'm going to give you a minute to think about this, but the question of the week. I like to get it. I like to get it out there because I want everybody to know who we are. Like, you know, not just Jersey Ed and super Beth who gets hit by a fucking car, you know what I mean? Bounces back and comes on the show. Right. I mean, we know all that, but there is a softer side to super Beth and, you know, and we always want to figure out what's going on, how, how maybe our personal life goes. And I know we talk about our personal life in the steps when we do this, but yeah, we do. It's fun. We do, yeah, it is fun, but we do enjoy a favorite board game here and there once in a while. So what is your favorite board game, Beth? <laughs> so, both of, so both of my favorite, my favorite board game <laughs> I'd have to say is risk. Okay. I love it. I used to play it like once in a blue moon, me, my brothers and my dad would play it when we were kids. And it's a kind of game that takes all day. Oh yeah. All day. And you got to dominate the whole world. I mean, that's what I'm out here trying to do. And I feel as though I have good experience because we used to play Risk as a kid. <laughs> you played Risk, so you're dominating the world. Okay. That's right. <laughs> that's a that's a that's an unusual game. I mean, I remember seeing commercials for it. We had it. I just didn't understand. It was just like a billion pieces in there. You, yeah. You like you. I, I can't remember what what you had to do with it. What was the what was the kind of the gist of the game? So it's a strategic game and you yes. basically have to, and it's been a while, it's been a long time since I play it. Like I kind of want to play it with my kids now, which would be like full circle kind of shit. But um, you have like all those pieces are either armies or tanks yeah. or um, like all the different kind of like, it's, it's your army, it's your force your armed forces. Okay. And then you have to like go after certain countries to try to get, all of the countries, right? So the strategic uh, game is how much manpower do I have and how much manpower do these three countries had then who's the easiest one to take over? By a roll of the dice, right? It's all the roll of the, roll dice. Of the dice, right? You gotta you just gotta have the numbers. I mean, if you uh, think about it, that's what war really is. You gotta have true. the numbers, you gotta have the power. That's true. Um, and so yeah, so that's that's the gist of the game. And it would it was hilarious. Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah, no risk, no game. reward, right? No risk, no reward. That's the no big reason. thing. So, but yeah, risk. I I did play it. I just didn't understand it. I guess I don't know. But Corey says Monopoly for sure, but it can lead to fist fights. <laughs> he says, "LL, listen Your to story. Grandma." Yeah, it's true. You owe me forty six bucks in rent. <laughs> <laughs> that is so <laughs> true. true. Yeah. True. <laughs> and and I we used to play Monopoly and we used to get very competitive too and like you know building the hotels and you know, I always wanted the uh, boardwalk and in park place to build hotels and you know, watch everybody like suffer when they come on. It felt like Donald Trump. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. I I mentioned his name. So <laughs> uh oh. Uh yeah, I know, I know. I just spent a couple of days with Chris Cudahy, who's who's who was a guest on the show several times uh in the pandemic so we'll bring him on one time oh, wow. he's, he's my left left wing friend very left wing. Oh, friend. i can be your left wing friend too. oh really are you too okay you and you and chris will get along <laughs> oh yeah don't oh, mention yeah. the t word around chris <laughs> oh Anyways, yeah so my see i'm very basic and and my board game is based on my childhood growing up just like yours obviously and when we were all growing up but it means something to me because my grandmother loved it, right? Mm. And my grandmother, I mean, my grandmother was my heart and soul when I got into recovery. It's a whole long story. We'll go into some other time when you interview me some other time. But my, I even have a tattoo on my arm, my grandmother and grandfather. So it says uh, Nanny. Aww, there, yeah. Nana. Yeah. So they're very big to me. But she loved playing shoots and ladders with us. I don't know. You remember shoots and ladders? I do. It's yeah, it's very basic, very easy. But it re every time I even hear the word or, or see, you know, my grandkids pull out the game or something, I'm like, ah, it just brings me back to Natty. And, the, you know, she had this tiny little house in Cerebral, New Jersey that we it was just so comfortable and we used to sleep on the floor when we slept over and she'd bring out the shoots and ladders and we would play shoots and ladders all night. So that's so sweet. Yeah, it was fun. Well, well, I shouldn't say when Friday night, cause Friday night she went to play bingo and my grandfather cooked us hamburgers and Lipton soup. 
<laughs> and then Saturday was the night we played shoots and ladders with her. So <laughs> you're like looking forward to it. You're like all excited. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So there's this whole story behind it. Just like you, you know, you grew up with risk and, and you know what, you know, that's what my recovery is like today is like, I get excited about it. I really do get excited to come in here and talk about the steps. I bitch and complain before the show comes on to Beth. I don't know shit about this step. I don't know what we're going to talk about. This show is going to go for three minutes and we're going to be done. And I'm going to call it quit. I mean, she has to hear that guys right before the show starts her and bam, you have to hear that every fucking week. Okay. <laughs> and then we get into it and we have a lot of fun and, and we, we yeah. really know what we're talking about, but that's what my recovery is about. I look forward to it. I'll be honest with you. I look forward to waking up every day, Beth and, and praying. And this step is perfect for me because we're going to get into this praying and meditating. That is my two go-to things I do first thing in the morning. And then the third thing is, this coffee coffee, <laughs> coffee. <laughs> so that is um that that's kind of what what my recovery reminds me of and and you know from you know getting all excited before we we go into step 11 john says trivial pursuit for me i remember trivial pursuit i was never that smart or i was always fucking drunk when we tried to play that i'm game. not smart enough for trivial pursuit i'm not even <laughs> smart enough for harry potter trivial pursuit <laughs> well i don't you know i don't think we're very smart people right because we're in recovery. Yeah. Listen, we're very resourceful people too. So we got to be smart. I just can't retain like people yeah. can just retain shit. Like, you know, who, who in the third world was, you know, King the third. You know, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's a you know, cares. How, yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Who the fuck cares? Number one, number two, how the hell do you remember that shit? You know? So anyways, but that's John, John remembers all that stuff. So John, thanks for trivia pursuit. So here it is guys. We're going to get into step 11. Sought through, prayer, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for a knowledge of his will for us and the power to, car the power to carry that out. Whew, mm. That's a lot in a little. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's again, it's one of the one. I think it's one of the simpler steps that's very complicated that, that I make it that way. It's just basically to me, right? So I do prayer and meditation. I do it every morning, prayer and meditation. I do my prayer every night before I go to sleep and I, I, I get on my knees and thank God. For, I thank God, Beth, the first thing to be over everything yep. is my sobriety. I don't care what's going on in the world, who's sick, what's going on with my health, what's going on with everybody. I have to ask for my sobriety first because God gives me that chance to live that sobriety. And mm -hmm. then I ask for the other stuff because if I wasn't, but if I'm not sober, if I don't have my sobriety, I can give a fuck what's going on in the world. If grandma's sick, if that one's di this, this one's doing that. I really don't care. Just give me my drugs and alcohol and, and fuck you all. Right. Yep. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And then the meditation piece is, um, is important to me too. Meditation. Here's what I think this, this step does and correct me if I'm wrong. I think it connects mind, body, and spirit into the steps and into my program, right? My mind, mind, body, and spirit, it connects me into my program, right? With through through God. I ask God for for you know for my you know to 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 guide me through life, right? Meditation is getting out of my own head. And when shit comes into my head, it, it leaves immediately. I meditate for a half hour every single morning. Every wow. single morning, I sit on my couch. I'm up at 4.30, quarter to five. I get on my couch. It's warmer here. So I sit outside on my, on my, on my, my porch. Lucky. And I know. Yep. And I meditate for a half hour, right? And it just puts I me like in this. another world, right? It brings me closer to God. I'm Not that I'm thinking of God when I'm meditating, but I'm not thinking of the shit, the negative bull crap. That, that life brings us on a daily basis. Because it for me, I can go off. And say, oh yeah, you know the, the mail didn't come today, and I didn't get I don't know, the check that I was waiting for, or my or my you know credit card I was waiting for. Or I could say, hey, you know what, it's coming. So I always go to the negative, right? But when I'm in that meditation state, when I'm praying, there's nothing negative in my life at that moment. So if it's a half hour in the morning, I get a reprieve. I get to understand what my life is really about. And that's why I said it connects my mind, body, and soul, or spirit, if you want to call it, call it soul. But that's where it really connects me. And that's, I believe that's what this step does. What's your thoughts on step 11? I have so many thoughts on step 11. 
Good. We still got about 15 minutes to kill. So have at it. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I'm literally going to read part of step 11. Good. Uh, out of yeah. the book All because right. I, I know it, this really frustrates me. So many people get steps 10 and step 11 confused because it says in step 10, continue to take personal inventory and when we're wrong, promptly admitted it. Um, and which, which is in the moment, right? It's throughout the day, right? We're, so we pause, right? And it goes through that. And then step 11 actually has a nightly inventory mm. that we're supposed to do every night. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read it. So yes. step 11 suggests prayer and meditation. We should not be shy on the matter of prayer. Better men than us are using it constantly. It works if we have the proper attitude and work at it. Uh, it would be easy to be vague about this matter, yet we believe we can make some definite and valuable suggestions. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we selfish? I'm sorry. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking about what we could do for others, of what we could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into more uh, in, into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection. I can read. Um, for that <laughs> would diminish so for our <laughs> that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. So that's the nightly review. And then the next very next paragraph, well, it talks about in, before you get into that, sure. can I just make a comment what you just read? You read all, all those checklists, like what was there about 10 different questions, po questions 10 different positive yeah. things, right? And then the three yep. negative things, or I think there's three negative things, right? And mm. that's what the meditation to me does. It brings out the positive, the God stuff, the, was I a good person? Was I a godly person? Was I, a, you know what I mean? And that's, yep. that's so important. That's meditating. Praying is meditating too. You know, it's just thinking of, of, you know, of not that negative shit and, the, and all that negative attitude that we get bombarded yeah. through without the day. So I'm sorry, go ahead. No, but I mean, you know, I actually wrote my 11 step inventory every night for about five or six years. Oh my God. Um, and it's so funny because I found the binder because so I used to be like super organized binder kind of check. And then I had kids, but um, <laughs> that does it. <laughs> but I actually I actually found one of my 11 step binders and I was kind of reading through it. And I was like, wow, I have I am so different. I've shifted so much since back then. And, you know, the things that would I would get caught up and I just don't don't even hit my radar anymore. Yeah, but it's yeah. because we do these steps. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now I do it at night. I don't write it anymore. Um, if I find myself getting out of the practice, then I'll pick up a pen and paper and write okay. it for a while uh, to get back into it. But anyway, then it says in the very next in the very next paragraph, it says on awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. We consider our plans for the day. Before we begin, we ask God to direct our thinking, especially asking that it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking mm. motives. Mm -hmm. Under these conditions, and this is where you get your brains back, you don't have to wait until you have five years. It mm -hmm. says, under these conditions, we can employ our mental faculties with, insur with assurance, for after all, God gave us brains to use. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong, mo uh, wrong motives. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here, we ask God for inspiration, an intuitive thought, or a decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We are often surprised at how the right um, answers come after we have tried this for a while. What used to be the hunch or occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind, right? So he's really talking about like, we're going to let you, like, this is where you start to connect your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Still an experience. Yeah. Being still an experience and just having made conscious contact with God, it is not probable that we're going to be inspired at all times. Mm -hmm. We might pay for this presumption and all sorts of absurd actions and ideas. Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. 
We usually conclude this period of meditation with a prayer that would be shown all through the day, what our next step is to be, which is exactly what you were talking about, Ed, that we be given whatever we need to take care of uh, such problems. We ask especially for freedom from self-will and are careful to make no requests for ourselves only. We may mm. make, well, I'm sorry, we may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. Uh, we are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. Many of us have wasted a lot of time doing that and it doesn't work. You can easily see why. And then it goes, and it kind of talks about, you know, meditating with um, your partner. And then it goes on to say it works. It really does. And then I love this. It says we alcoholics are undisciplined. So we let God discipline us in this simple way we have just outlined mm. but this is not all there's action and more action faith without works is dead mm -hmm. the next chapter is entirely devoted to step 12 so that is literally i just read to you 95 percent of step 11 mm -hmm. and it gives us some black and white direction that we're supposed to be taking mm -hmm. um and i can tell you that my the necessity to do a deep dive into step four has dramatically declined when I started mm. doing this on a regular basis because my sponsor has a rule. If something comes up on your 11 steps more than three times, mm. we need to talk. Like, why are you Very not moving through this? Like yeah. what's going on that you're still stuck on this shit? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You're right. So I only yeah, I only do a deep dive into step four like every seven years. Mm, okay there you go yeah that's about give or yeah. take it's about right and, and you're it's funny that you, you say that because my sponsor always bring up certain things he goes eddie didn't we just talk about in step four what are you doing talking about this again you got to let it go just let it go and give it over to god you know and again you know at the end it says the knowledge of his will for us and the power to cat the power to carry that out right so right. the knowledge is that we're going to turn it over right to me anyways and 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 then the power to carry that out god's going to help me not to like you said two or three times what are you talking about why are you thinking maybe you got to go back to a step four now we don't have to like you said we don't have to do a huge step four again but right don't be stuff that's going to pop up but i think if like you said if we we get into step 11 and do that inventory at night and in the morning and stay positive instead of negative and meditate through these things and accept them i think i think step four can almost be eliminated after a while i mean Between maybe 10 and 11 um, i mean not, i mean i'm yeah, not saying I mean, eliminated but you know what i mean yeah but and you know it's interesting too it's like i hear a lot of people say you know why are you still on this you gotta let it go mm. no you don't it's time to dig in and find out why you can't let it go mm -hmm. right because that power that power is god right we, mm -hmm. we buy into the, we're beyond human aid. We read it every day in every meeting. Nobody hears it. Don't know why mm -hmm. ego anyway. Yep. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, if we're beyond human aid, then God's the power. And if you're having a human experience, welcome. We all are. Yes. <laughs> I do. I will never understand why people get so their egos. So get in the way that they don't think that they're supposed to be having a problem, letting something go or a problem doing something or a problem not doing something mm. or like when did you know when when did we become disillusioned that when we get sober we go through the steps one time we're supposed to be on this plateau and like be forever fine because mm -hmm. i gotta tell you i'm not fine i mm -mm. cried like a solid hour yesterday mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. of my back oh yeah dude my baggage mm -hmm. is uh, safety first, right? Yep. I, co I come from a shit ton of trauma in my background. Mm -hmm. I have been homeless. I was homeless for the first five years. I was sober. Oh my God. Um, and so, you know, home is a big deal to me. Like home is my center. My husband mm. is my center. Um, and safety is number one for me. Mm. And yesterday I know that this is, um, irrational. It's not rational. It's irrational, but I didn't live in that house anymore. Mm -hmm. and i didn't live in this house yet and mm -hmm. i was feeling homeless mm -hmm. and when i finally this is the, i've always i never i've never moved well i i don't move well it's very mm -hmm. traumatic for me yeah. and you know i'm not a little wussy baby mm -mm. but and i always try to cover it up like i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine 
<laughs> but it's like, I can't be at the house when they're packing stuff up. I got to leave. And like yesterday, I, I like drove around and like I went to Home Depot and I went to like a couple other places because I can't be there. Like I will literally have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And I realized yesterday it's because I feel homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. And I, I agree with that a thousand percent because literally I just went through that um, four months ago. And and you're right. It, 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 it Like I said, it's going to and what I probably meant, we're just getting into the things is I'm just getting settled into my new house. It's finally a home yeah. to me. You know what I mean? Stacy yeah. was like, yeah, it's a home. The minute she walked into it, I'm not like that. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, the home was back in New Jersey, blah, blah, blah. But you're right because of the insecurities in our lives, because of, like you said, the homelessness, sleeping on couch to couch, not knowing where I'm going to live next. I, that, yep. you know, not having a permanent home or, you know, or, you know, or is this, you know, this is too good to be true to be living here. You know what I mean? It's going to be taken away just like everything else was, you know, that's a negative bullshit, yes, right? They're <laughs> definitely going to take this away. And my husband was like, we signed the papers. The house is ours. And he goes, he goes, we're not even renting. This is our home. I'm like, well, it's actually bank's home. And then I started freaking out for the mortgage. But, oh yeah. 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 But, but yeah. But it's like, but you know, you know, when we go into that nightly inventory mm -hmm. and we keep, subjecting ourselves consistently and constantly mm -hmm. to that mini inventory of just today, yep. it puts us in a place where we can think and we can feel and we can integrate the two mm -hmm. that we don't, and we no longer have to go to our sponsor to yep. ask every little thing. Our reliance yep. is upon God. Yep. You know, if you think about the steps and like the grand totality of them, like God is letting us out of the house to go do whatever the fuck we want. And step exactly. 11. Yeah. Because in yeah. step 12, we got to start teaching other people how to do it. That's right. That's and we right. have to continue to practice. So it's like, here we are in step 11. They're telling us you're getting your brains out of hock. God mm -hmm. gave you brains, use them, use them. go yeah. out, choose the life you want to live, do the work it's going to take, create the reality you want to, you crave. And you, along the way, you keep doing your inventory because you're going to screw up. You're going to exactly. mess up. Yeah. Yeah. You, well, yeah, you're going to mess up. Here's what I always tell everybody. We use, I always say we have to keep it. We have to keep it all the problems or whatever comes up or whatever our, our insecurities are. We have to keep them small. Right. And we have to keep them further apart from each other, but in, in not in recovery or when, when I was not, when I was using, I would keep I would stay in my problems in a huge part and I would keep them very close together, you know, and, and, yeah. and that's, that's, listen, we're human beings. We're going to, we're going to mess things up. Even though we're addicts and alcoholics, we are still human beings underneath all that. We're you know human. what I mean? Sometimes yeah. we don't, we don't realize we are sometimes, you know, we wear our, our, our recovery as a badge. We also have to remember we're fucking human beings on top of it all. And this shit's going to yeah. come up. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to yeah. do things that we shouldn't be doing, but we're going to correct it immediately. Or we're going to get that thought out of our head and then move on. You yeah. know, even some people say, well, how come I still think about it? But you think about it, but you're not doing it anymore. You're not doing it anymore because you're you're praying through it, you're meditating through it. You know that what you what you were supposed, the things that you did in the past weren't right. I mean, I get the old, I get crazy thoughts every day in my head. I like yeah. my sponsor always says, Eddie, you can't control the first thought that comes in your head, but you control the thoughts afterwards. And whatever you want right. to do with it afterwards, have at it. It's you know, choice. that's your decision. It's your choice. But exactly. Own, what you're own your choice. Own your that's choice. It. That's it. And that's own what it. that's what this is letting us do. Like, God, help me. 100%. God, should I really go over there and punch that guy in the face for fucking cutting me off? That's what Probably I want to do. <laughs> Probably not as right. You're right. <laughs> Probably not, but not definitely not. Well, yeah, we could think about it. You, but could, let's, do, you could do yeah, that. You could course. do that. Listen, my sponsor tells me all the time, you can do whatever you want as long as you're willing to accept and take on the consequences of mm. those actions, good right. or bad. Yes, absolutely. And absolutely. listen, there, there are people out there. I mean, I'm not advocating for assault, but- there are some, I slapped a guy in AA once. I told him, I said, if you put your arm around another newcomer woman, I've told you enough. If you do to get him to slap you. And he did it again. I walked up to him, slapped him. He was like six foot five. Oh I my slapped God. him right in the face, man. I don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you gotta, sometimes it's, it's necessary. I guess I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not calling for violence or whatever, but you know, there's only so much you can take also. Right. I mean, you know, at, at some bad 
decisions that people make, you know, and, and that's right. not fair. And, and, you know, to be around those bad decisions, sometimes you have to get them out of either out of your life or move them forward or whatever. And this is the step that helps me get through all that here. It said, right. um, it's uh, like, why, you know, if, if one of your character defects is to uh, <clears throat> avoid, Mm-hmm. It's valid, right? Definitely. We avoid things we don't want to. Yeah, me too. And um, I was avoiding this I, podcast all day long, and then then I text so you like, yeah, five minutes. I'm like, yeah. fuck, I thought you didn't want to do it. I was, I literally was like, oh my, the makeup on, um, <laughs> the makeup that I finally found. Anyway, um, but it's like you know, if let's say we avoid, right? And, and I did this this week to my boss and in my job, which I'm not proud of, but. Um, I, listen, it was a week. Dan got very, very sick. So the work I had to do to move got doubled because he mm. literally, he was on a steroid. He couldn't oh, breathe. Jesus. Like it was, it was really bad. And so I got overwhelmed. And instead of just calling and just being like, listen, I know I'm, I've only been here four months, but like, I kind of need, the, I need the week <laughs> off. I just avoided talking to my boss. And so this morning I got into the marketing meeting and he's there and the COO is there and the market, the other marketer is there. And, uh, I just said, guys, I want to apologize. Mm. Like, I know that I have not been available this week, but I knew that. And I knew I needed to do that to get it clear because it came up on my inventory mm-hmm. three Absolutely. times this week. Absolutely. But I was feeling guilty for not giving a hundred percent at work. Yeah. Um, I was doing the bare minimum. That's not who I am. That's not who I want to become. Right. Mm-hmm. If we do things long enough, that's how we become. Yeah. But, but, but and you're so-, so aware of it, Beth, you and I are so aware of it. Again, it's, it's the things, you know, the, you know, the, the, we keep them this small and we keep them this far apart. Right. We do that. Right. But there are some times we're going to have to not be there. Right. And, and you think everybody in that room is ever there 100%, 100% of the time. No, no, right? but I kept myself accountable this morning yes, and I yes. apologized openly Absolutely. and publicly. Yeah. And I asked my boss that le- yesterday when I talked to him on the phone and I, po- I apologized personally. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, listen, I did not, I was not at my best today or this week and I did not shine the way I normally shine yeah. this week. And I yeah, kind of fucked okay. up this week yeah. and I owned it. Yeah. And that's I good. Owned it. That's and- the part you owned it. Yep. And that's now I get to move on from it. Mm-hmm, exactly. And what you, I you, don't have to keep wondering. I mean, I know that he's uh, <laughs> I know he's not happy with me, but that's OK, because I did my part. I know I screwed up. Yeah. I admitted I screwed up. He has every right to be less than pleased with me. He's 100 percent. Is it Mike? Um, Is it Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Tell him, come talk, give him my number and I'll take care of it no, all. He, would, he's, he didn't <laughs> tell me he was upset. He, and he, I don't think he would tell me he was upset, but he just, I could tell, dude, I would be pissed if I were him and he's much more gracious than I could ever be. But um, he is, he is a wonderful man. He really is. He really is. And I, I fucked know. up this week. That's oh okay. my God. I hate fucking up. I really I still do. But if I don't look at my inventory every night and sit and like what you were talking about at the beginning of the podcast to bring this full circle is that um, in that morning meditation where I get quiet and look at the 24 hours ahead, Mm -hmm. that's that's probably what gives me the courage to walk out Mm -hmm. the door every single day. Yeah. Absolutely. Every Absolutely. single day. Cause I know what's coming. Then I can plan it out. Mm-hmm. I can look at it. I know what's going to scare me and, mm-hmm. and I know, okay, that's going to, that's going to be a scary 10 AM meeting is going to be scary mm-hmm. for me. And before the 10 AM meeting, I take an extra couple of minutes yep. and I, and I get quiet and I pray. Well, we're armed for the day. We're, we're, we're ready armed. to battle. We're armed for the day. That's yep. what Exactly what meditation does, and you ex- explained it perfectly. That morning meditation that I do for that half hour gets me. First of all, if if I'm scared of a meeting or or intimidated by a meeting or whatever a person, I can go back to that half hour in my mind and and yep. replay. <coughs> excuse me, replay what that thought was and how I got through that thought because it's only a moment in time that we're going to be there. Nothing will last yep. forever. We won't be through this thing the whole time. And the other thing too that God's with me when I go through all this stuff, you know, I'm going to, what's the old yep. saying, fall down seven, get up eight. Jeff Zazel says it yep. all the time. And if you don't yep. fall down, you're not going to learn. So if you go into that meeting, being intimidated, or if you go into that, whatever it is, um, you're, you're gonna kind of, you know, you're going to learn from the thing. So you know what? 
next time this week that you you screwed up with, that you think you screw up when it's going to be a lesson somewhere in, in your life a hundred percent it's already it a is. lesson listen yeah. shit's going to come up i'm going to learn how to deal with it better of course of course absolutely. and if i don't i'll keep having it pop up in my life until i learn how to deal with it better yeah yeah and, and i like- deal with it better <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I hear my dogs barking, speaking of dogs barking, but I like what you said. Oh, you read it. I think it was more towards the end. And this is, you know, I always say, I always say it a different way, but faith without um, works is dead. I always yep. say, you know, um, a plan with no action is just a dream. That's the same thing. Yep. You know, it's like hundred percent. Right. You know, and, and if we don't have a plan going into things, like I, I'm, I do some life coaching on the side and, and I always teach my, um, my clients, you got to have a daily roadmap, right? Before you go to yes. sleep uh, and, and before you go to sleep, make a plan of what you're going to do the next day, right? That's meditating also. That's being organized. That's thinking things through, right? And I do I do one in the morning because I get up very early. I do a, um, a daily roadmap every morning and it gives me that that kind of that insight of what I'm doing because I'm meditating on what I'm doing. And then I can come back to that moment where I wrote that and say, okay, I checked it off the list. It's done. Yep. It, it, it was in my mind. I, I visioned it. I understood it. And now it's done. It could be something simple yeah. as a phone call, picking up my daughter from the, I don't know, from the airport, whatever, whatever it is. It's it. But once we write it down, first of all, it gets out of here, goes on the piece of paper, and we have more space to be productive, more space to, you know, kind of think forward than yeah. worrying about things in life, you know? And that's why I love that faith without works is dead. I mean, I live by that daily because if you're not putting shit into action, you're not doing shit, man. You're fucking not doing nothing. You're really not. You're going to get what you get. You're, you're exactly. going to get what you get. You're going to get what yeah. you put into it. And yeah. You know, what's really funny is, is that you don't even have to put that much effort in. And it also says in the book, God doesn't make too hard terms with those who seek him. Mm -hmm. Like it's never as hard as I think it's going to be. No, no. Physically moving was very hard, Mm -hmm. way harder than I thought it was going to be. But Mm -hmm. other than the physical part of this, it was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Yes, like absolutely. Just keep moving forward. We keep moving, being of service you know, getting my mind off of my issues and being of service mm. to somebody else as we move through, yeah. if I'm told to take action, take action and yeah. then be of service to somebody else. And then exactly. all of a sudden it's, you know, November, Monday is, you know, Tuesday is November. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't even realize it. You know, my sponsor always says, if I'm complaining or bitching about something and, and he, he doesn't want to hear that. So he goes, Eddie, who did you help today? Who did yep. you reach out to the to AA to help somebody today? I'm like, Andy, what the fuck does that have to do with my running shoe not working right? And he's like, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. Get out of self and go help yep. somebody because that doesn't yep. fucking matter. That running shoe or whatever that little problem is. Go help another yep. addict and alcoholic who's struggling and you get out of self and that running shoe really doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't. Or that and, move or whatever it is. Yeah. And the answer to the running shoe is going to come. Yes. Yeah. But right. if you you know, it's like it's like a, a watched pot never boils. Mm, Did I say that yes, right? I think I said that, that right. right. Yeah. But it's true. Like, yeah, there's something wrong with the with the running shoe. The running shoe has to be dealt with. Well, mm. I don't have the money until payday. Well, then get off, get your mind off of it until yeah. payday. Yeah. Payday you know, it's got to it's you know, it's got to be washed and let out to dry. Well, then do take the action and do it like it. But right. But to sit there, right. And just concentrate only on the running shoe. Mm -hmm. You're just squandering. Mm -hmm. You're squandering. That's 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 what you said earlier when you read it. Self-pity. Like, I love being in that self-pity. I don't I don't want to live in it, but it's I know it's so great, isn't it? It's like feel sorry for you. (laughs) That is so true. It is so true. And but you destroy the people around you when you're in that fucking self-pity. You really do. You destroy yourself, dude. Well, yeah. On top of it all, you destroy yourself. Absolutely. You know, you think it's it's the right place to be, but it's not. And then when you get out, you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Why would I even do that? You know, yeah. you know, yep. it, it, you know, this is all the meditation, the prayer. If I, if I would pray or if I would think of, of you know, or, or whatever my higher power asked for help before I made any kind of decision or made, made these self-pity bullshit things or sit in a pity pot. I probably wouldn't be there as much, you know, but I take my will back. Right. And I, Ooh, we all do. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then I say, here it is. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit on a pity pot and you're going to listen to it all. 
that's it Dude, I, don't, I don't even i don't i gotta tell you when i'm in the pity pot at this point i don't even have anybody i can call so like <laughs> so like they'll call me or they'll text me most of my friends will text me and they'll say hey what's going on and i'll just say i'm feeling sorry for myself check mm. in tomorrow like i don't <laughs> want to fucking talk about it and my husband will come home and he has to deal with me and he'll be like what's going on with you and i'm mm -hmm. like i'm feeling sorry for myself and yep. i would like to be left here in my warm squishy wet dirty <laughs> diaper please check back again in an hour you know what i mean like I don't, be... I don't want somebody to tell me not to piss moan and complain so i'll just piss moan and complain to myself to myself exactly exactly so you know i like that you can identify that i i don't I, I mean i can't identify but my wife usually says you know stop your bullshit stop whatever you're doing and i'm like oh yeah maybe i am sitting in that pity but but i don't want her to know right that i'm that i'm sitting in it and i'm like what are you talking about and then i'll have to go apologize it's this whole big fucking ordeal that goes around in this right right i mean who the, why would you want to even do that why would you want to torture yourself like that but we do because we're alcohol we're alcoholic exactly absolutely absolutely and comfortable is easier than mm. healthy yes absolutely i read a quote today. is easier than healthy i read a quote today hold on you you keep talking i'm going to read this quote give me a minute um what the hell was it i don't it? even know what to talk about i just totally drove a blank that's right it's on you i got it here it is all right uh one can choose to grow go one can choose to go backwards towards safety or forward towards growth yep safety to me is that pity pot is that bullshit is not not praying is not um is not yep. um, meditating is not getting out of my comfort zone is not taking that chance to move is not taking a chance to get a new job um, you wear a different colored shirt wear a pair of pants that you never wore whatever that i mean whatever it is little cut your hair man cut your hair whatever it is grow your hair yeah grow well that's let's be serious <laughs> <laughs> it's like you carried away now <laughs> no but um <laughs> but no it that's that's exactly what it is and that's what that's yeah. so when we go i when i go back to safety that's really my pity area that's my pity shitty area because i'm not growing yep a uh, hundred percent and listen yeah. but but at the same time sometimes you need to go back to safe of course yeah take a breath and then jump off the goddamn diving board that's right and just jump off a, the goddamn a leap of diving faith. board take a leap of faith yeah right get yeah. safe and then know that god has your back right yeah. but yeah. that's what we're doing in step 11 like but mm -hmm. if we're doing it every day it becomes a working part of the mind that's it that's it yeah yeah and that's what we're going towards we're going exactly. towards like the goal right the goal here is to be a well-rounded entire mm -hmm. human being mm -hmm. yeah and I'm then not just an alcoholic no then it becomes automatic though what you're saying it comes automatic like it just happens and you don't stay on that pity pot you don't you know you're, you're asking for for the guidance of god you're asking for your you know you're doing the meditation and then those things that you you thought were hard are not hard anymore because you're being guided through things but then you don't even know it you don't even realize it you're doing hard shit out there and you don't even realize it and you're going to find that out with the moving you know eventually you're going to be like oh, i have to unpack this dude and it just gets done because you're accepting yeah. it and you're moving through it you know and believe me i understand i've been there done that so <laughs> Dude, I wish you could see. I literally, my background right now, beyond this, is like there must be thirty empty boxes oh and paper. God. I'm oh literally sitting next. To, it's the only place I could find to sit in the house. <laughs> the big house well, I just bought, and well, we wouldn't even yeah, know it. <laughs> it's boxes everywhere, man. Oh my god! Well, and there's full boxes to my right. Oh there's my empty god. boxes to my left, and full boxes to my right. Oh my god! The, the, but my the, kitchen almost looks like a kitchen. Good. All right. Is is your husband doing the chore while you're here? He's helping. Yes. All right. <laughs> See him looking in boxes. Yeah. God. Anyway. Well, so I think step eleven, we we kind of crushed and went through and kind of explained what our ideas were and what I think the interpretation of the book was. And the big book reading was amazing. I mean, I am not a big book guy. I really am not. I I, I have it. I. I 
you know, when people quote from it and they read, they know what I'm like, that amazes me. Right. But I'm like that with the step book. So I'm yeah, a little, you which know, is I'm, a good mix. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. So that's what, that's, what's good on this show. But, um, you know, and that reading from, from that, and that's why I think, you know, this, this all works when we're going through these steps that we can see them from both sides. I mean, they mean the same thing, but they're written a little bit different and they're in each written book. a little bit differently. Yeah. Yep. And, and we can bring it together. So, my thought on it again, I think step 11 brings my mind, body, and soul or spirit all together and gives me the direction that I need. Um, I always say, you know, God guides me in the direction that I need to go, not me, yeah. you know. And yep. if if I don't want if I do want to have that direction and, and God guiding me, I gotta really, like you said, the nightly inventory, the morning inventory, because that's how God would guide me through things. I mean, he's not gonna come down and pick me up and move me around like this, but through the prayer oh, meditation, I know, I know. But through all this is that's how we get, we get, we grow when we move through things. And step 11 yep. is a huge part of, of my life without even realizing it, you know, almost on a daily hourly basis, almost even. Yeah. Yep. You know? So, uh, any closing words on step 11 before we, uh, we sign off here? God rocks. What's that? God rocks. God rocks. Absolutely. I love that. I thought you said God rocks. I'm like, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> God rocks. I love that. That's God a rocks. great, great way to close the show. So Beth, uh, let's again, let's everybody keep Bambi in our prayers, make sure that yes, you know, her, her family is, is taken care of. And because Bambi does a lot for us and, uh, you know, just kind of say a prayer for if you can, or your thoughts or whatever you guys, you know, kind of out there. And uh, don't forget next week's show is going to be with Jeff Zazel. He's going to be looking at <laughs> this with, uh, with the clinical eyes. And I love that show and Bambi will be back and uh, it will be all the, the crew will be back together. So um, Beth, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know thank you had you. a lot going on over there and you're taking your time out to give us, you know, some experience, strength and hope for everybody out there. And um, Stay sober, everybody. This concludes this episode of Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast. Follow us on Facebook for past shows and updates and enjoy free access to twice daily support meetings. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week.